Hi friends, Tammy Beard with Stampin' Savvy. Thanks so much for joining me on this absolutely beautiful day. This is the project right here that we're going to be making, this fun card right here. And you may recognize this from last week's video. I gave you a sneak peek of this as a way to use the negative space of this die cut from this mini pop-up card that I taught you how to, how to make last week. So it opened up like that. Really, really cute, right? This one is so fun to pop in a gift bag, put on a present, tuck in a lunch box or a lunch bag, backpack, um, just so many different things that you could do with this little guy. It's a little three by three. And I will link to the video for this in the description as well as above. So I was working on this right card right here as I wanted to design a square card, but because I am savvy, I didn't want to pay the extra postage for a square card that we have to pay here in the United States. So this design allows you to have a square card that isn't square. It actually fits in our medium envelopes. So I was working on this and I thought, wonder if there's a way to incorporate these two designs. And so look at this. You open it up and that mini pop-up card is on the inside. Is that not fun? Once again, we are using the Fine Art Floral Suite. It's from our spring mini catalog on pages 32 through 34. This is a collection of coordinating products and we're gonna be using that stamp and the die bundle as well as the designer series paper. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna want is a piece of cardstock, and we're going to be using half a sheet of the eight and a half by 11 cardstock. This is Knight of Navy, and on the short side, you're gonna cut it in half at four and a quarter, so it's four and a quarter by 11 inches. Then you're gonna turn it on the long side, and on your trimmer, you're going to score it at four and a quarter, and then score it at five and a half. Then you're going to want some of the designer series paper, and we're gonna be using two different pieces for this. So the first piece is this one here, and it is four inches wide by five and one eighth inch high. And then you're going to turn it on your trimmer and you're going to cut it at one and one eighth. So this piece is four by four, and this piece is four by one and one eighth. And that's your card base and it is going to go just like this. Now what I want you to see, the reason that I cut it larger as one piece first is because I wanted the pattern to continue. The eye likes continuity and it, it's another easy way to provide that coordinated look on your projects. Then we're going to use another piece, and this is going to be for the mini card on the inside. Now, in this version right here, I used the same pattern on the inside as I did on the outside. So you could do that, or in this case, I wanted to bring in a coordinating pattern. And that's kind of the beauty of the designer series paper is that the, the patterns, as well as all of the colors, are designed to mix and match. So one pack of paper gives you all kinds of different possibilities that you can mix and match. So you don't have to buy different packs in order to, to get those coordinating designs. So it really is a great value. So I chose this pattern right here, and this one is six by six. Okay, then we have our this is the negative of that was left over from the from this card from the pop-up mini cards that I made last week. In fact, I had a <laughs> I had a whole stack of them left over. In fact, I think I still have others. There's just a whole stack here. And so I, I want to make a bunch of these cards using those negatives. Now, if you're following up like I did, the piece of cardstock was two and three fourths high by four and a quarter wide. And so what I did is I have just trimmed this down. It's actually about two and seven eighths inch wide is about the narrowest that you can get it. If you're starting from scratch, I would just pick a piece of cardstock that's three by three and make it simple. Okay, then we want something to put underneath this so that you really get those 
those letters to pop and stand out, especially against the pattern. You can see the difference here between this and this. So you can pick any of the colors. You could use petal pink um, is here, that would work. You could use white. Um, I chose to use the Flirty Flamingo because it's the closest match to that pattern on the inside, as well as the roses there on the front. So for this piece, I've just made this 1 8 of an inch larger than this one. So it's three inches wide by two and seven eighths inch high. Again, if you're using a three by three, then just go three by one and one eighth square. Okay, then you're also going to want your panels, your sentiment panels for the inside. And these are in our basic white. And I will give you details on these as we get a little bit further into the card. Okay, so we have a six by six piece of paper right here. And for this one, I want this to be on the inside, this pattern to be on the inside, so that, again, when the card is open, that's the part that we're going to see. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to fold it this way and then we're going to fold it this way basically in half both directions and then you're going to fold it in half on the diagonal and again we're just using the bone folder to get those like that okay now what this is what happens these two sides pinch in and there you go. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna set that off to the side. Okay, so for this card base, you're gonna fold it in half at the five and a half inches and then give that a burnish. Okay, then we're going to open it up at that other fold line, the four and a quarter inch score line here, and you're gonna fold it back and we're going to burnish that one. Now go ahead and open it up. And that space right there between the two, you're gonna come in and you're going to bring your adhesive and you're gonna go ahead and we're going to close this shut. Now, I'm using the multi-purpose glue. You could also use tear and tape or you could use the stamp and seal plus. You wanna use a good strong adhesive on this because we don't want this moving. And then we're going to just close this down. And then this is how the card is going to open. So basically what you're seeing is a four and a quarter inch square card. Okay, then we're gonna come in with our pattern and we are going to put these two pieces on. Now we're going to go ahead and take this one and make sure that your patterns are aligned. We're gonna put this one on first. And this one's gonna go right up against that score line. Centered, centered top to bottom. Okay, then we're gonna come in with this one. Not pretty. Let's make sure that I have that right. I turned it around. Ah, there we go. <laughs> and then this one's gonna come down that eighth of an inch so that now you've got a full eighth of an inch on all sides for this one. Okay. All right, then we're going to, then we're going to do this piece right here. And it's similar to how we did the 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 cutouts the the positive we're going to turn it over now you're going to be doing two things and what i would suggest that you do is start with the inside first so all of these little areas right here basically you need to kind of go around and we want all of these like areas that jut out and that little piece there inside the j these all need to have glue. Okay, then after you have gone around all the letters and as well as on the inside, then we're gonna come in 
and do that edge around the outside. And you notice I'm not using a lot of glue. You just need a very little bit. This is a super strong glue. Make sure that your, your press and seal is not underneath here. Make sure we have this the right direction. <laughs> and then try and get your borders the same. There we go. Give that a gentle pat. And then again, what I like to do is come in with the clear block and just let that sit for a good 30 seconds, maybe a minute. While that is drying, I'm gonna set that here. Let's go ahead and do this right here. Okay, so we have our card and it's going to open this way because we're opening the card um, sideways instead of up and down. And so these are our two panels right here. So in this case, what I've done is I've taken our basic white cardstock. And in this one, I used the same technique that I had shared last week in using the, um, the markers. I used Flirty Flamingo, Poppy Parade, and then Mossy Meadow. Used the spritzer. I went ahead and I stamped this on a scrap piece of the basic white. And then after it had dried, I brought in the stitched shape dies and the second to the largest circle, I went ahead and I die cut that out. And then I came in with the coordinating Knight of Navy and I stamped happy birthday. Now I wanted it to have a little bit of pop. It kind of got lost the, you know, the flirty flamingo here kind of got lost. And so what I did is I've brought in the layering circle die set, which has all of these fun scallops. And if you didn't know, all of our layering sets, which are available in circles in squares and in ovals, they're designed to mix and match with the stitched shapes dies. And so I picked the size that, um, that worked and I cut that out of the, the Knight of Navy. And again, it just helps that to really pop. So again, it's going to open this way. Make sure we turn that the right way. And then this one was the largest square from the stitched die shapes, and it's going to go right here. So that's going to be the panel where we're going to sign. And this is the inside greeting. So the front is going to say, just want to say happy birthday, and then you have a place to sign it. So if you're doing it opening from the side, it's going to look like this. If you are doing it to open up this direction, then they're going to lay out this direction. So let's go ahead and put these in and it's just centered into that square. Now, if you don't have the die cuts and you just want to keep this simple, you could just cut two squares that are two and three fourths by two and three fourths. And again, I really encourage you to watch last week's video because there are so many savvy tips that I shared in there that will help you. Okay, there we go. So now we have our pop-up set to go. And let's bring this one back in. All right, now what we're going to do is I'm going to come in here with my, you do your, take your pit tool as well. And we are just going to peel that back. And it's just like we did last week. Voila! The press and seal, oh my goodness, makes it so, 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 so easy to do. If you haven't played with it in your craft room yet, definitely it is a big help. And I just like to come in with my bone folder just to make sure we get all those little bits. And there we go. Okay, now we've got the front of our card here. Okay, now we're going to come in with one of our vellum. It's our square vellum doilies. I had one that got crunched and I decided, you know, instead of wasting it, it would just go perfect just behind there like that. So I'm gonna come in with my 
stamp and seal and just put a little piece right there. And we just kind of want to get that square like that. I think that's good. Okay. And then let's go ahead and pop this up on some dimensionals. Put that down there in the center. And then we are going to go ahead, before we put this on, let's go ahead and put this in. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and you're going to close this. And if you can see, your tips basically fit in all four corners. And so what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over, make sure we have the right side here. And I'm going to give this quite a bit of glue because we do not want that moving. Okay. So again, we're going to come in before I put this down. So this one goes right up against that score line. And these two, so none of them should go over. It fits perfectly inside the card base, just like that. Okay, then while it's still closed, come in with this glue. And again, we're gonna use quite a bit. We don't want that moving. We're gonna close that just like that. And we're gonna let that sit for just a minute. Okay, then what we're going to do here is I'm going to just do a stripe across here. Just like that. I've got a bow already pre-done. And I'm gonna come in with the glue dots here. And you're just gonna kiss that to the glue dot. And I'm gonna get another one on this side. And it's gonna go right there in the center, just like that. And then come in with my ribbon scissors. I keep a ribbon on it so that I do not use this for anything else. Paper products are wood-based, and so you'll probably notice that your scissors get really dull, so it helps to have one that's just designated for ribbon. And there we go. Just want to say happy birthday. Okay, so we have card design number one right here, which is that pop-up mini card. Then you have card design number two, which is this one right here without the mini pop-up card. Maybe you just wanna make this and keep it simple. In that case, you could just put a four by four piece of your basic white inside here and either decorate this panel or you could add an additional piece of your designer paper here on the inside. Again, another four by four. So this would be design number two. Or you combine it into the cards that we made today, which are the combination, which is woohoo! When you open it, you get that fun surprise of it popping up towards you. So is that not too fun? If you liked these ideas and you want more, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you did like this, leave me comments, leave me a feedback. I appreciate it and I love hearing from you as well as a thumbs up. All of the supplies that I have used are available in my online store. Do take advantage of my Savvy Shopper rewards. I love giving away free products and I appreciate so much that you are watching. Thanks again until next time. Bye-bye.